So what is 3D printing and what can you do with it? Well, let's start by explaining base, the basics of what a 3D printer is and what they do. So what we're going to be talking about is the most uh, common type of 3D printer, which uses a technique called Fuse Filament Deposition. Basically, it acts like a really fancy hot glue gun, takes plastic from a filament, and then squeezes it through a nozzle, a heated nozzle, onto a bed and then onto a part, and it builds it up one one little line of plastic at a time and makes your, your finished part. The print head is moved around by a stepper motors or motors that had moves the bed around, the head around, there's many many different configurations and it basically is a three axis which means three movements, uh, three directions of movement and it moves your head around to where it needs to be and squirts that plastic out and builds a part up. Now, how would you use that? Well, everything starts with a problem that needs to be solved or just an idea. So let's say you get an idea on a sketch for what you want to make, uh, whether it's uh, like uh, rocket fins for for a bottle rocket, or you're trying to make a small boat, whatever, whatever it is, uh, you have your idea. So you always start out, it starts out with a sketch on a piece of paper, real simple, and then you move on to the 3D modeling, which is called uh, CAD, or Computer Aided Design. And it is a program that runs on a computer and allows you to draw what you want. And there are many different CAD programs available and lots of different ways to do it. But the basic end result is you have a file and the several common files, 3MF files is one of them, or STL files. Uh, we'll talk about STL files here. And an STL file is basically a list of a whole bunch of triangles that make up the part. Uh, it's kind of complicated. Uh, but you can see it here. Anyway, once you get that file, you have to do something called slicing. So you take that file, which is what you've just drawn on your CAD system, and you import it into another program. That's called the slicer program. And what that does is it is it takes that file, it takes a bunch of settings you give it, because the printer does need to be told how to operate. For an example, it needs to know what kind of plastic it's using so it knows how hot to make the little hot glue gun like extruder to extrude the plastic it needs to know how how hot to make the bed so that the plastic will get uh, will stick to the bed well enough and there are other sit settings like resolution which affects the the surface quality of your print how coarse it is and high resolution takes longer time and there are other settings like that that also can get pretty complicated but the basics are quite simple once you get all your settings put in it slices the part the model with those settings and what that is is basically is it is it comes up with a g-code file is what it's called and that's a list of commands for the printer that tell it where to move that head and how much plastic to push out at one time and what temperatures are set different things at and that file is automatically generated so you don't have to do any typing or anything with it it automatically generates a g-code you would put it on an SD card or you'd send it over your network or put it on a thumb drive and get your printer printing with that. And it'll take that file, it'll heat the printer up, and depending on what kind of printer you have, it may level the bed, and then it'll start printing. And prints take a long time. It's not like a laser printer or a, even an inkjet printer where you're printing on a piece of paper that only takes a couple minutes. This can take many hours. For an example, this little boat right here, which is called a Benchy, it's used to determine the quality of a print uh, that the printer is generating. This takes two hours to print, uh, and this is a very high resolution. You could cut that way down probably in half if you went to larger resolutions. I mean, uh, less fine resolution, coarser. So what can you do with a printer? Well, you can make pretty much any plastic part you can think of that you would see made ordinarily with some limitations and some things you can do that you can't do uh, that factories that injection mold parts actually can't do. What kind of materials can you use? Well with a common desktop fuse filament uh, printer like this one here uh, and most of them you're going to find it's plastic. You can print with different plastics. Uh, you can print with cheap uh, easy to work with plastics. There are stronger plastics. You can even get plastics that are compatible with PVC pipe, uh, like ABS, and what's very exciting is you can get carbon fiber filled plastics and uh, other composite plastics that are very strong. So while it's not metal, it is still a very strong product because they put uh, nano carbon in it and that causes everything to bond together and stick much better. Imagine what a large part would take to print. I have another part right here. Uh, this is just a random, random assembly. 
uh, it takes, and you can feel it, it weighs six ounces worth of plastic, and all the parts, there are five of them, they take 17 hours to print this part, uh, total print time. Now, you may be thinking, wow, that's hardly usable, but the printer is doing this by itself with no intervention on your part. As long as you give it a roll of plastic, you get it started, everything got set, like everything set up right, the printer runs along by itself, and you don't have to worry about maintaining it or standing there and adjusting something or twiddling a knob or anything. The printer is working fully automated. So it's a fully automated home production system. 